This is our nerd episode about all of the amazing physiologic changes during pregnancy. Yes, so if you are anything like me during pregnancy, you may be wondering to yourself, why am I short of breath, kind of just trying to talk and at rest? Why is my resting heart rate higher? Why does it feel like I am falling apart despite my efforts to stay active and healthy? Yeah, as it turns out, the woman's body goes through some amazing changes to support the developing human inside. Yeah. And so we're gonna dive into all those changes this week to help you understand what's going on and to help you feel that what's going on is normal. Yes, so if this is your first time meeting us, I'm Sarah, I'm a board certified OBGYN and I am pregnant with baby number three. Yeah, and I'm Kurt, I'm a board certified pediatrician. And, and we, we are, are the, the Doctors Dr. Bjorkman. Welcome back. As we mentioned, this week we're gonna go through some of those incredible physiologic changes of pregnancy that all happen to help support that growing baby. Indeed. So you can see the physical changes. You get that growing baby bump. You get the pregnant waddle, that thicker hair in the pregnancy glow. But what about what's happening on the inside? What's going on with your heart, your lungs, your muscles, your other organs? Yeah, so let's talk about the heart stuff first. Of course, our cardiologist wants to start with the heart stuff, so here we go. Yeah, well, it's really amazing what yes. has to happen to support a pregnancy. And these cardiac hemodynamic changes happen early. Actually, mm -hmm. mom's cardiac output, or how much blood is physically being pumped through the body every minute, begins to increase as early as week six, mm -hmm. continues to increase until late second trimester, 20 to 24 weeks along, and really peaks um, about 30 to 40% above non-pregnant levels. So if your heart is normal, normally pumping about five liters a minute, it goes up to about seven liters a minute during pregnancy. Yeah, yeah. In early, and this happens in a couple different ways. In early pregnancy, it's primarily with increasing uh, stroke volume or how much is actually being squeezed with each contraction of the heart. Yeah. And then later in pregnancy, this is combined with faster heart rates. Yeah. And so all of this, the mom's heart also increases in muscle mass too to accommodate for all of this extra work. So you may have noticed that your resting heart rate begins to rise even in the first trimester. So the average increase in resting heart rate is kind of anywhere from 10 to 30 beats per minute. Um, studies have shown that heart rate continues to rise till about 34 weeks and then kind of decreases around 40 weeks. The upper limit of normal for resting heart rate in pregnancy is not above 115 though. Mm -hmm. So if your resting heart rate is above 115 beats per minute, that always warrants an evaluation. So talk to your OBGYN. Yeah. You may also notice some changes in blood pressure. It is normal to actually have a drop in blood pressure, both the top number, the bottom number, and the average number. So systolic, yeah. diastolic, and mean blood pressures all decrease during pregnancy. Yeah. There is also an increase in the total blood volume and components. So a normal average blood volume of a non-pregnant woman is around five liters, and this depends on your height and weight. So you may know that our blood is made up of plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and other clotting factors. In pregnancy, your body needs to increase that total blood volume to support the developing baby. It starts out by increasing the plasma volume. So it increases by 10 to 15% in the first trimester and then continues to increase until it's 40 to 50% higher than baseline by about 30 to 34 weeks. Yeah. However, your body has to not just increase the volume of the blood, it also has to increase its ability to actually carry oxygen, which is why it increases the production of red blood cells too. Mm -hmm. um, this begins at approximately 16 weeks along and then mm -hmm. continues to accelerate, reaching about 25% incre increase above mm -hmm. kind of the pre-pregnancy baseline by 34 weeks along. Yeah. With that plasma volume expansion being so much greater than the increase in total red blood cells, um, the blood's hematocrit or hemoglobin is modestly reduced and it, we call this a dilutional anemia. So more fluid, not quite as much more of the red blood cells. And so we call this a physiologic anemia of pregnancy. Yeah. And this is why it's so important to be getting adequate iron during pregnancy, right? Yes. Your body needs to be making more red increased blood red blood cells, cells which mm -hmm. takes iron, um, and you really need to make sure you're supporting that to help those red blood cells. Yes. Here is the cool thing about this. That 
plasma volume expansion and that dilutional anemia during pregnancy has physiologic benefits. Yep, so it actually means that the blood is a little less thick or would reduce viscosity, which yep. reduces resistance and helps perfuse that placenta with less work on the heart. Yes, and so that large increase in total volume in your blood vessels near delivery also provides some reserve mm -hmm. against the normal blood loss that happens when you give birth. Kind of estimated normal blood loss for a vaginal delivery is somewhere between 300 to 500 milliliters and somewhere from 600 to 1 milliliters to a liter for a cesarean mm -hmm. delivery. Also, there are other postpartum, peripartum hemorrhages that can occur. Mm -hmm. So there is as much as 500 milliliters of blood that can kind of be stored or sequestered in the utero placental unit. And then that gets auto transfused back to maternal circulation after the baby is born. So that minimizes some of those adverse circulatory effects when you have that postpartum blood loss. So it's kind of amazing. Yeah, that is cool that there's like, you know. Auto transfusion, your body has that set up to try to help. Okay, yeah, it is important to note that yeah. patients with underlying heart conditions, especially congenital heart disease, yeah. may not tolerate this well. So if you have a heart condition, please make sure you're checking in with your high risk OB during pregnancy for this. Yes. So all of the changes in the heart, heart rate and heart contractility lead to increased cardiac output that gets distributed to the placenta, the kidneys and the skin, and that helps provide nutrients to the fetus. It helps mom to excrete maternal and fetal waste products, and it assists in maternal temperature control. Um, that increased blood volume also helps make sure the system is adequately full while also having an added ability to carry oxygen um, to support the placenta and developing baby with oxygen as it needs. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, all the heart changes. Yes. Um, but since we've mentioned changes in the blood, it's really important to note mm -hmm. that there's also an increase in blood clotting factors during pregnancy, yes. which makes pregnant women five times more likely to develop blood clots, yep. deep vein thrombosis than non counterparts. Yep. So if you have a sudden onset of shortness of breath without explanation, you've got shortness of breath at rest or while lying down, yep. or you notice swelling, increased temperature of just one of your legs mm -hmm. or other concerns for blood mm -hmm. clots, mm -hmm. please be sure to talk to your doctor or seek medical evaluation right away. Yep. So there's definitely abnormal reasons to be short of breath during pregnancy, mm -hmm. but I feel like there's a lot of just normal pregnancy shortness of breath. Yeah, yes. Um, and I feel like that's something that has gotten noticed here in some of our recent episodes. Um, so here's why that little bit pregnancy shortness of breath occurs. Um, the lungs need to oxygenate all that extra blood that we just talked about. But there is also some physical competition for space. During pregnancy, the uterus is growing and the resting position of your diaphragm shifts up approximately five centimeters or two inches. So with that increase in the intra-abdominal pressure from your growing uterus, there is relaxation of the muscles and the cartilage of your chest, kind of under the influence of relaxin, one of the pregnancy hormones. And so that allows your chest to get bigger, your rib cage. Um, and that increase in your thoracic circumference actually can increase by five to seven centimeters. And then the transverse diameter by about two centimeters. Yeah. And there's so many things going on here too. Increased progesterone concentrations, also another one of those pregnancy hormones beginning as early as the first trimester, yep. is also increasing just the volume of each breath you take by about 30 to 50%, Yeah. right? This is all through that increased chest size, but yep. also some other factors. It just means each breath is a bigger volume. And so with a stable, breathing rate yep. you're just breathing more each minute that kind of gives some of that sensation of like hey i'm breathing more than usual yeah um the other thing that's happening too is that progesterone is also stimulating you to actually over breathe or hyperventilate mm -hmm. and this does a couple really cool physiologic things that means the oxygen content in the blood is up and the carbon dioxide content is actually low which really helps facilitate getting blood to the placenta and to the baby yes so what you're saying is the pregnant body is basically taking bigger breaths and this is driven by an increase in chest size and 
breath volume, mm -hmm. and you're also being stimulated to kind of over breathe a little bit by progesterone to drive that blood oxygen content up and the CO2 levels down. And that is really helping offload oxygen to the placenta and developing baby. Yeah, absolutely. And all this is happening while your lungs are competing with that increased abdominal pressure from the growing uterus. Yes, so if you notice you are having to let your bra strap out a little bit, that is a normal physiologic change as your thorax chest cavity expands. It is important to mention that there are some other key changes going on in your other organ systems too. Yeah, now for instance, the kidneys are also increasing in size during pregnancy by about one to one and a half centimeters, yeah. which accommodates for filtering that increased blood volume. <sighs> Under the effect of progesterone, the bladder tone also decreases and its capacity increases, almost doubling by the time you reach term. Despite this, um, pregnant women have increased urinary frequency, urgency, and incontinence. And this is largely due to increased production of urine and also that baby's head engaging in the pelvis during the third trimester as they are getting ready for their birthday. So it sounds like you actually are just going to the bathroom all the time. Indeed, and then sometimes baby's little head moves and you're going to the bathroom 13 seconds later. <laughs> so it is important to mention there in addition to your urinary system, there are also changes going on with your GI system, things like heartburn and constipation that are also no fun. Yeah, and these symptoms are largely due to a combination of three major factors for the GI tract. Yep. Of course, there's the growing uterus, putting increased pressure on everything, mm -hmm. um, but there's also decreased gut motility, which can lead to constipation, which we've talked about. Just right. Yeah, and then the combination of these with also the relaxation of that little sphincter, that muscle at the top of the stomach, mm -hmm. leads to more reflux and heartburn. Yes, so you may find yourself modifying your diet, eating some different things, not eating as close to bedtime um, to fight that heartburn and on some kind of stool softener to help fight constipation if that is something you are experiencing. Yeah. So all in all, there's a ton of changes going on during yes. pregnancy. It's the body is amazing. This is truly amazing what happens to grow this little human. Um, but sometimes it's, uh, you know, uncomfortable, not so glamorous. So hang in there. If yeah. you ever have questions about this stuff, talk to your OBGYN for tips and tricks on how to survive. Yep. Um, and if you're concerned, make sure to seek medical help right always, away. Always. So anyway, make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you guys back next week. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.